All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Ben Russo, who is, as they like to say here, across the pond in the UK, uh, in Hove, which is on the uh, which is on the coast of England, on the south coast, right? That's correct. Yeah. How are you, John? Good, good. And Ben's a visionary designer specializing in creating emotion-driven, aesthetically captivating lighting installations and timepieces. Uh, you come from a background in the oldest recorded town in England, Colchester. Uh, and you're inspired. Yeah, yeah. And you're inspired by the uh, contrast between historic beauty and futuristic imagination. Uh, and so what we're going to talk about today is your design journey. So how you... Um, how you came, how you went on this creative journey and came to the space that you are now and how you see design. Uh, because let's face it, I mean, particularly today, I mean, design is, is you know, is so critical. It's everywhere. You know, people are so attuned now to, to imagery, to design, to, uh, you know, how things impact them. But we also live in this crazy distracted world where we don't really tune into things you know so so um so let's talk a little bit about first of all like where does your interest in design what what was that rooted in so it's probably good to start at the beginning and um just you touched on where i was from which is colchester and you know i was lucky enough to have this beautiful old castle which was you know two thousand years old where the Romans and Queen Boadicea defeated the Romans coming into England. Mm -hmm. And what was amazing about it is, you know, they invented sewers and all sorts of things for, you know, the development of hygiene. But as a kid, you know, I just didn't appreciate uh, castles and old cobbled streets. Right. You know, I saw James Bond houses with these amazing cars that went underwater and these amazing buildings that rose out the sea. And I thought, you know what, that's that's where I want to be. I'm, I don't want to be with these old castles. I want to be shaping the future. And I, I remember from an early stage, I had this ambition that I was going to create and shape the future somehow. I didn't quite know what it was mm -hmm. or how, but there was a burning desire there to, to kind of change things and make them, you know, shape the future. Um, and... I went to art school and first of all, I, I, I wanted to do model making and film special effects because right. my idea was this kind of fantastical outlook on life as, you know, the James Bond houses were these kind of amazing houses that weren't really like a normal house, but everyone thought, wow, that is unreal. And, a, you know, a, a car that could drive up the beach and then into the sea, you know, these things mm. weren't quite real, but it was a nice thought. And but it looked real, it looked possible. And I thought, well, there's a means for me to do this, but getting into the film special effects world was my first um, desire. And I went to college and I wanted to learn the art of model making. But at that age, it was all just turning into computer graphics, where it was a time when I wanted to be hands-on with materials and learning how to use machines and, and work with my hands and mm -hmm. feel materials. And I suppose it was, you know, that's, much like it was the digital era coming yeah. in and it, it really i wanted the physical era you know i wanted the i wanted to touch things material was was is it was exciting to me i had this imagination but um uh you know everything was going digital so i, I moved out of the world of special effects and started designing furniture for right nightclubs and little gigs that we were putting on where i was djing and kind of I kind of had lost heart really on this career right. that I thought was going to go somewhere. And then I thought, Oh God, you know what? It's, it's not, it's not, it's just not going to happen. And so I kind of thought, I'll just see what happens now. I play experiment with material, um, you know, computer graphics and stuff was, was new at that stage. And mm -hmm. I was interested in it, but not as much as the making side. So, um, so yeah, it was, I'm going to say that was the beginning of the digital age, but you know, for me, I wanted to be hands-on and discover material and learn how to put things together. So, yeah. um, so, so how important how important is that form form factor to you? So, I think it's really important to understand how to put things together. And you know, everyone can have ideas, and in this day and age, you know, you can literally speak a command into a AI interface mm -hmm. and say, 
draw me this, create this building with a yeah. river running through the living room, you know, and you can, you know, you'd be amazed at the results you can actually get. But there's something about it that, you know, you know, there's kind of no soul there. There's no, there's no real thought that connects to a certain person. So there's that, you know, there's that distance between, uh, you know, a person or a client and a project mm -hmm. that that's for. So, you know, the, the realms of fantasy, you know, can be even more extreme in this day and age, which, mm -hmm. which I think, you know, from a creative level is kind of cool, but I think it creates distance from people and people want connection. And right. you're in the world of business, you're creating something for someone, you know, in my business, I create bespoke artworks or limited edition pieces, interiors for houses, which is for one person or one family, you know, it's not mm -hmm. for everybody. And that family might have a very different taste to the family who lived down the road, and they could both ask me to do the same house. But because they've got different ideas and different tastes, that project would come out very different. And right. When I work with someone, I put my imagination into it and I I learn and I'm, try to understand what a client wants to give them what they need. If it's an interior project, if it's something like my own work. So this is a mm -hmm. this is an illuminated timepiece behind me. Mm -hmm. And effectively, people don't need a clock that tells the time right. using patterns of light. But it mm -hmm. is it is a thing of decorative beauty. Um, you know, I, I wanted to advance the world of timekeeping in an artistic sense so it is meant to be there for enjoyment you know I, I often say to my clients you know I, I, nothing makes me happier than to to see the expression on someone's face when they connect with my work and it's lighting up their minds and you yeah. know that gives me a real buzz but there is a lot of thought that goes into it and there's an understanding of a person um, certainly for a project um, for these kind of pieces, which I do on my own, on my own mer merit, right. but you know, they're for a hotel or a a house where people are going to entertain and it's going to be experienced. Because right. the, and I and I think that's uh, the, certainly the piece behind you. I think that's uh, that's what's uh, kind of very appealing about this is that you've created something that you you can engage with right you you know right, you yeah. look at it you know you're not just glancing at it to figure out the time because you know you can do that with your phone That's you're right. glancing at it to figure out the time but you're also engaging with the, so you are kind of and i think this is obviously central to your work as you say is the idea of actually being present and engaging with something for a moment or two yes absolutely and it's it's there to give more than just you know, I think in this digital age, it's instant gratification on mm -hmm. everything. And that people just get used to it. Whereas what I want with and I'm going to use the timepiece again as a as a as a as a an example, but the purpose is I want people to stop and stand mm -hmm. in front of it for a moment and enjoy watching the seconds pass and feel grateful to be here now, to be healthy, to be stood here, to you know, I just think there's so much going on. Everyone's, nobody's been busier than ever. And there's so much connection and, you know, uh, noise from social media and text messages and Facebook. And, you know, it's like, God, you just, you know, you almost don't know where to look. And, you know, but actually we've never been less connected. The connections are not, you know, they're less genuine. It's like, Mm -hmm. there's nothing more better than picking up the phone or getting your mates around having a barbecue and actually having a, uh, a, a proper chat where you sat mm. down and you can you can see the expression in someone's face not not all this you know fake nonsense that's going mm. on everyone wants by, to by the way by the way i was pushed back on that uh, when anybody said that notion of like oh we're busier than we've ever been in our lives i was going are we though or are we just more distracted than we've ever been in our lives and i think it's uh the distraction is a huge piece of it and that's why i'm saying that's why uh it's interesting using what you're doing is using design to get people to pause for a moment and be in the moment. And that is so critical, like just in the world in general, because people aren't doing that. People aren't stopping. They're just constantly on this thing and they're running yes. around. And so um, to your mind, like design can play and, you know, physical designer that can play a real role in helping people 
to stop for a moment, to maybe be present, to push all this stuff aside and focus on one thing for a moment, which I think is a is is an art that a lot of people have lost. For sure, for sure. Well, you know, I think there's one there's a there's a there's a need for it you know mm -hmm. there's just so much going on so much in, and it would never stop unless you kind of just say right stop or you know you put your phone in a drawer mm -hmm. and say right i'm not looking at the phone or you know i'm turning off all my messages there's a there's a point where the world or it's never going to keep summoning you and asking mm -hmm. for you your attention your information adverts you know, people are on different time zones now. It's easy to connect. And they're like, well, I know so and so is going to be up. I'll send them a message. Or, you know, it's like you have to kind of physically remove yourself and have a discipline. And and you know, that is hard. But mm -hmm. it's it's the the work that I'm wanting to create is is a reason to kind of think. And it's that thinking point to think to say, oh yes, you know, actually I need time for myself. You know, I need. I need time away from the computer. I need I need time with my family. I need connection. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, even my children, you know, they're they're growing up quick, and it's it's kind of, you know, what we could play on a computer game, but actually, let's have, let's kick a ball around in the garden, yeah, yeah. or you know, let's go and walk the dog. And you know, it doesn't matter what we're talking about. It's just it's you know, this is normal life. And you know, mm. you know my son's like, oh well, I'll be bored, and it's like. Well, you imagine, little boy, I didn't, you know, I literally had a bike and a ball. I didn't have an yep. iPad and all this stuff when I was a kid. And I'd be out climbing trees or, yeah. you know, throwing sticks or digging holes, you know, whatever <laughs> yeah. it was, yep. covered in mud or whatever it was. But it was great fun. And, you know, I think there's a lot of that I'd like to do with my son in that same, you know, just build a den in the woods, you know, with a load nice. of sticks. And there's something about that, getting your hands on, not be scared to break a stick and, you know, get yourself covered in mud and you know that that sort of stuff is good for you and it's an experience especially doing it with friends and right. I feel that um yeah that digital people are in a room playing a game talking to someone and they could be on the other side of the world and that's kind of fun but when when that's life on a daily basis you're working you're on a zoom call then you're playing games and mm -hmm. you know, I, I just I feel that there's a need for people to just stop and have a reason to to you know, to get back to reality almost. Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I totally agree with you. And I think that is, I think that is one of the things that's, it is one of the hardest things is to get people out of that mode that they're in, the total uh, distracted mode. Um, but even, I mean, the, the thing behind you, like, obviously it's, 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 it's got some like engaging and, you know, elements happening in it, but even the piece that's to the other side of it, right, is, uh, is even something that's, you know, um, flat and static, right? It can yeah. still have, it, it, it can still capture us, right? And I think that's what we've lost is we've lost the ability to look at something like that's flat and static and actually ap appreciate that. And I think when you get people to start realizing that, um, you know, that there is pleasure and, and real, real kind of, I think, um, not just pleasure, but I think it helps you as a person to ground yourself a little bit, to center yourselves a little bit when you can focus on something external to you that can be just interpreted by you. And that moment is your moment, right? For sure. You know, I think that's a big thing with art that, you know, you can take your take your own feel from it or take your own, you know, view on what you think of it or appreciate it. But I kind of put it down to you know if you go for a walk in the woods sometimes and you think wow aren't the trees beautiful or just you know the sound of the leaves rustling and you feel peaceful and calm whether it's the waves crashing you know it's a kind of an experience and you know everyone has their slightly different take on it but it's a thing of beauty you know mother nature is is unbelievably beautiful and calming and it's good for you or you know you could be looking at the stars with someone and or you can do it on your own but it's it there's a something out there and your imagination can run and think you're not being told what to do. There's not adverts coming at you because you're scrolling through something. Right. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I think the digital age is, you know, there's sure. so many wonderful things with it. Absolutely amazing. But I also think there's a need to hold on to these things. So, you know, we must not forget to go to an art gallery and, mm -hmm. you know, I, I specialize with lighting and lighting is, such a, a thing of beauty that you know obviously at nighttime it really comes yeah. into its own 
but there's so many different ways you can play with it, whether it's, you know, you're entertaining with, from a musical sense, like in a gig, and it's kind of decorating a, let's say, a fairly shoddy venue, or whether it's a beautiful house and there's a means to kind of capture the daylight in, you know, windows through the south-facing side of the home so that it feels you're connecting with nature in the daylight, but then at nighttime you dress it with a certain ambience to make it feel calm for nighttime and, you know, put you in a relaxed mode. So, um, you know, that's, that's what I use with my work, but I think, you know, with life, everyone needs, everyone needs these connections that yeah. are meaningful. Um, and I guess, I guess the other part too is the, you know, the subtlety and even using, you know, you know, positive, negative space, but the subtlety of it, because I feel like we live in a very unsubtle world right now where everything is like just a hammer hitting you in the face. And uh, a lot of the, a lot of the design we see today is like that too. It's just like, you know, it's in your face or whatever, but I think, I think it's in, it's in the subtleties is where the power often lies. Yes. You know, I, I I would agree with that. Um, you know, the the big obvious things feel like they're being rammed down your throat mm -hmm. and almost aren't enjoyable. Right. The things that you almost discover yourself, and they're the bits that you 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 feel much more excited and connected to. And I I, I use another example with the clocks is that if they were these are in a a reception area for a let's say a hotel or somewhere. And someone goes in and they're set there and there's, there's deliberately no hands or numbers. And someone sat there for five minutes kind of watching the seconds go round. Think, oh, what's, you know, is that a clock? Oh, hang on a minute. But the seconds go round and then the next second, actually the next minute builds after the 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, wow, it is a clock. And they're like, oh, my gosh, it's a clock. And then the, when their friend comes or whoever, they're like, oh, my gosh, look at this clock. And because they've <laughs> discovered it, they're, they're suddenly my biggest fans, but because right. it's not been kind of rammed down their throat, well, look at this amazing design, you know, it's kind of, you let people do have their own kind of journey. And if I was designing an interior for someone, I often say to the, to the homeowner, let's take you on a journey so that if you were taking your friends round or, you know, let's say right. your, your best friends, their family have come round and you're doing the come and look at the house, come around for dinner. And it's like, when you open the front door, what's the first thing you see? And it's kind of, you know, do you go in and look up and there's a big chandelier above the stairs? You know, it's, what is it? And it, you yeah. know, nothing's, nothing's going to be wrong. It's just, let's imagine this journey and all these sense of discovery, because the more things that are fun and beautiful and functional, you know, mm -hmm. some people don't have the luxury of just sure. spending money on these decorative things, but it's, there's still the same methodology of making it comfortable, whether it's an artwork of the family or, you know, it's a photo of the dog, whatever it is. But there's a little sense of discovery. And I think yeah. that's so a great when, thing. So in when, love. when you do that, do uh, when you do that process with people, uh, do they start to look at their space differently? I, I think so. I mean, I mean, I know so because, you know, they're asking me to they've got their home and they'll always know what they don't like. You know, yeah. you can say, <clears throat> how about we paint, paint it all brown with pink stripes? They go, oh God, no, that would be, that'd be horrendous. <laughs> it's like, good, well, you know what you don't like. So let me start kind of pushing the boundaries of, you know, and it's like, well, what if we put a, you know, a paneled wall here where there's kind of vertical strips of timber that are, let's say fairly, fairly cheap, but create this beautiful, shadow and and light effect which just is really interesting it's inexpensive and then they kind of oh, okay well that sounds interesting you make a little mock-up and a small panel or you show them some images on pinterest and then and then suddenly they've got this very different kind of outlook of okay well wow that makes sense and then you think well the stripes can then be married into a rug or something you know there's there's a way of connecting all these things together and it becomes a great overall set of ingredients but mm -hmm. it's like telling a story and that's the whole thing is this there's a narrative to it that they can follow and then it's suddenly it's like wow you, you're, you're literally telling them a story they're part of it but it's their home and yes it has to be practical but it's like sure. okay you go through the front door into the hallway and where do you put your shoes and you don't want to see all your shoes and your jackets hanging up so there needs to be a cupboard or a storage or you know and then it's like so then you come into the living room and you've got a a patio that you can see the furniture so you know where do you want people to go and sit so we kind of mm -hmm. you know and it's just 
however it may be, but there's a there's a kind of story that suits that person. That person has their house and they've bought it and they're you know they're proud of it, obviously. You know, they've spent a lot of money on it and they're going to be spending probably as much as they can afford yeah. to make it as good as they can. So you want to be, I want to be as respectful as possible with their money, give them as much as I can. And I don't want to, you know, I'm not designing something for me. I'm designing yeah. it for that person. I'm using my skills to push their comfort zone to do something they couldn't imagine would be so good. And the, the difficult thing with lighting is people can never imagine how amazing lighting right. is going to be for their house when it's been treated. And most of my customers tend to come from, oh God, I saw the house that you did for so-and-so and that was unbelievable. And it's like, we can't quite tell what it was, but it was just, yeah. you know, we know that it was just amazing. And it's, it is the right light levels at the times in certain areas, you know, all of this is so considered and it does take a lot of effort. Um, mm -hmm. And some of the equipment can be very expensive depending on the control, but you know, it's effectively giving somebody what they want and an enjoyable experience. Yeah, yeah. And that's what it should be at the end of the day, shouldn't it? I mean, design and, uh, you know, the spaces that we occupy and stuff, they should be enjoyable experiences. Uh, it should be something that uh, resonates with us personally. I think so. I, I think I think life now is, should, you know, should all be about experiences because mm -hmm very soon it's going to go into artificial experiences, you know, where, you know, like in some of the sci-fi films, they're going to plant a chip in your head or whatever, and you're going to have a fake experience. Um, so I think the world is an amazingly beautiful place. And, you know, before too long, we'll be exploring the next planets in the kind of solar mm. system. And I think before we destroyed our world, you know, what I feel is the need to get a handle on people's reality to not keep consuming, you know, plastic waste and all these things. And it's like, well, plastic waste needs to be stopped by the biggest producers, you know, who are producing, you know, bottles of um, pop every day and bottles of water that, um, you know, are made by the billions. And we need to change those into organic matter materials that are going to decompose you know there's a way of being clever you know people still need water people still mm -hmm. need drinks every day and that's not going to change but there's ways of being clever and as designers it's our responsibility to do something clever with materials mm -hmm. to ensure the the, the 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 longevity of our planet you know um i I'd love to do more, you know, with materials. I, I make my, this clock is from aluminium and glass. So it's, right. um, the materials can be recycled and, mm -hmm. um, you know, I try to ensure that they're, they're all made locally and materials are sourced locally. So they're not flown all over the place, but right. um, you know, and, but, you know, I make things on very small volume. My stuff is, mm -hmm. you know, custom made low, low volume. So I'm sadly, I'm not going to change the world unless <laughs> someone asks me to design you know, a new water bottle or something yeah. like that, you know, that, but that's, well, you know, I, I think the world changes one community at a time, you know, there are the, or communities and, you know, change within themselves and stuff. And I think every person makes their contribution. I think sometimes, you know, making your contribution within your own local area is more impactful often than, uh, you know, the people who like to pontificate about, you know, great world yeah. problems and so instead of actually doing something, you know, sure. themselves practically and tangibly, like you're doing there with your use of materials. And as I read, you use every stuff that's within a hundred mile radius of yourself. Um, yeah. So listen, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much. I mean, it's been a fascinating insight. Uh, all of Ben's information will be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people just a little bit more about you and what you do. Thank you. Well, I'm an artist and designer. I tend to specialize in the use of lighting in my work. Um, so I have a series of pieces like the timepieces behind me. This is called the Tempus timepiece. Um, I also have a series of static artworks, which um, is also influenced by light. So if you imagine this is a, a silhouette of a beautiful lady, um, which is highlighted in gold leaf. Now, I am a a James Bond fan. So, you know, if you imagine the old Goldfinger film Goldfinger. from the 1970s, um, that, Shirley uh, Bassey. <laughs> that's, uh, you know, it's, they were, they were exceptionally 
good films. I mean, absolutely shoddy mm. now when you go back and look at them, but the kind of uh, some of the buildings and the design and, you know, mm. they were great fun. But um, I create interiors, artwork and design that is is here to light up people's lives. I love the um, positive energy that my work brings to people. And I would very much appreciate if you would check it out sometime. I have my work on Instagram and I have a great um, Pinterest page with all sorts of weird and wonderful ideas and my website has a good collection of my work. So um, love you to check it out. Yeah. And like I said, all those links, we'll have them below this video. So uh, listen, thanks again, Ben. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Yeah.